welcome to the wheels on the bus. They go bitch, 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 apparently. I'm your host, Michael Riley. With me is Dane Forgione. I was saying blip, 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 not bitch, bitch, I don't bitch. Give There's a, a difference. Fuck what you said, I said bitch, bitch, bitch. Oh, wow. I'm allowed to say what I want to say, except for certain things. And Jason Amherst. You can't say that on the internet. But I did. There are certain things you can't say, like the N word and the F word and the, the Q word. We still have two vetoes or di- diarrhea cards, I should say, uh, as I spun the wheel already. You can't you can't say gun in the first few seconds or else you get demonetized. Gun. Uh, gun, gun, uh, gun, 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 No, you're going to owe money. Stop. <laughs> you're going to owe money. Uh, Destruction Derby 64. I am unfamiliar with this game. Also, uh, yeah. this channel is not monetized, so... Well, yeah. Wait a second. Well, why'd you stop? Huh? Oh, there it is. Let's. I don't know. Let's play. Let's see how this plays out. I'm, I'm actually kind uh, of curious. Okay, so we got Looking Glass Studios, published by THQ, under license from Cygnosis. Interesting. It is the third installment in the Destruction Derby series. Okay. Uh, updated graphics, increased number of cars and tracks, new modes like capture the flag, 24 cars, more than 12 courses, split screen up to four players. Uh, I guess we're um, trying to pick the best car. Started development around 98. Uh, Cygnosis, a division of Sony was working on Destruction Derby for N64. Interesting, actually, that uh, I don't think they had been fully bought out by Sony yet. Um, I think this is the best car, I think. Whoa, mm-hmm. Black Betty Ambulance. Hello, Black Betty Ambulance. 100 points for each collision, 20 points for each kill. 20 for each checkpoint, 10 second bonus for scoring 30 points. Three, two, you got all that? Good. Uh, Aaron Bolding of IGN believed that the game came out too long after the original version and that it was a shadow of the outdated PlayStation game, complaining about bland backgrounds and flat textures, and the graphics are it's grainy and suffer from slowdown. It's in 64, flat textures and... is. You know what? What the fucking system was known for? Whoa! It, it surpassed the uh, original PlayStation games, but not by much. Time boner. Uh, somebody, uh, somebody referred to it as Destruction Derby Arcade. Too easy for experienced racers and big fans of the franchise. Are you at the? Are you near the Parthenon? <laughs> I think. I'm not sure. Oh, wow. So uh, at the time of this recording, the new Batman show by Paul Dini, uh, mine behind the uh, original animated series, uh, has a 100% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Nice. Now, you know, the cynic in me says, someone's going to ruin that and be like, oh, (laughs) I'm just... I'm going to give it a one because I'm a dick. I don't know. Maybe I'll be wrong. Booch, 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 booch. Oh, shit. I'm trying to collide into cars. Oh, that one's dead. I'm trying to collide into cars like that. Time boner. Well, uh, it, it'll be available for, you know... People not in the press to watch in a matter of hours from now. So, guess we'll find out if it stays at 100. percent Yeah. In. Time boner. Yeah, I got a time boner for colliding with that car. Oh well, this studio don't exist anymore. 
What studios? Looking Glass oh! Studios. Jesus Christ. What, uh, uh, what the people behind this name? game. What in God's what? name did you do? What? I blow them, blew them up, which is what I'm supposed to be doing. What's, what else have they done, Looking Glass Studios? Besides um, this. Um, well, they were founded in 1990 in Salem, New Hampshire. Uh, they were they relocated. They were immediately burned at the stake. No. That, that's Salem, Massachusetts. Well, close enough. <laughs> Same area of the country. No, they, they they moved to Cambridge, Massachusetts, oh. um, and they went defunct in 2000. Uh, they are known for Ultima Underworld, System Shock, and Thief. Hmm. I really wish that if that going defunct just meant you started singing, you dropped a bomb on me by the Gap Band. <laughs> that's you dropped the bomb on me, baby. baby. Baby, you dropped the you bomb dropped... on me. And Wait you a second, what me the... on, babe. Wait a minute, who's that guy with his shirt off? Does that say soy bomb? <laughs> now, uh, of course, System Shock still exists. Well, yeah. Didn't it just get remastered <laughs> by Night Dive? Yep. Yeah, of course it still exists. Yes. They uh, Night Dive won't let you forget uh, the classics. It uh, inspired the likes of Deus Ex and Bioshock. Interesting. I mean, the name Bioshock alone is kind of, you know, obvious. And it also inspired Deus Shock and Bio X. And Deus oh. Bio and Shock X. Shock your X. <laughs> Shock your hey. X. Hey, Mark, you are so funny. Thank you. You dropped the bomb on me, baby. baby. You dropped the you bomb dropped on the... me. Whoa, 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 whoa. <coughs> you put me up, you put me on, and then you put me down. You dropped the bomb on me. You turn me up and you turn me on. Drop the bomb on me. What? Squid Game Season 2 uh, date just announced. Okay. Uh, December 26th. Hmm. Uh, and we'll return for a final season in 2025. That's lovely. So they must have filmed season two and three back to back. Okay then. Fun. Yeah, really? you know, uh, be curious to see where that show goes with everybody's maybe favorite Jedi uh, back in the role of, uh, you know. Struggling former gambling addict? Perhaps. I, I thought it was interesting that he, he actually learned to speak somewhat fluent English, apparently, just to play in Star Wars. All right, let's do this again. Metro Challenge. Give me that. Oui. He uh, he took a lot of inspiration, I guess, uh, from uh, the performances of uh, of uh, Liam Neeson and uh, oh god, I'm blanking out on his name. It's uh, Obi Wan and Qui Gon basically uh, to play Soul and uh, the Acolyte. Well, one of them is Hayden Christensen. But um, that was Anakin. I'm saying Obi Wan and Qui Gon, um, Liam Neeson and uh, Ewan McGregor. Oh, that was okay. it. Can't believe I didn't spin out. Oh my God! <laughs> oh my God! 
Oh, your God! So I missed. Oh, I pissed. Oh, I pissed. <laughs> you know, I I made a I made a mistake early. I thought Bob Dylan was thinking you dropped a bomb on me during the Grammy soy bomb incident, but evidently he was not. He was singing something else. You turned me on and you turned me up. You dropped a bomb on me. Well, what I think is, what I think is really fucking funny is, as the guy first starts dancing, Bob Dylan just gives him a side eye, like, "Who the fuck is this guy?" Like, just doesn't even like, doesn't seem all that fucking bothered by it. What a tip. Get out of here. There we go. So, um, I mentioned in the previous episode that I went to see uh, Straight No Chaser. Um, yes, before yeah. that, however, I got to try a brand new restaurant. Well, not brand new. I got to try a restaurant for the first time. Okay, what restaurant was that? That was Raisin Cane's. Okay. Ah, uh, yes. The very chi- good chicken. Very, very, good sauce. Uh, very fucking good chicken. Yeah. I was like, so my choices were because I wanted to go somewhere that I don't normally go. Uh, and there's plenty of choices in Dayton. Um, and I narrowed it down to Raisin Cane's and Five Guys. And I've been to Five Guys before. So I was just like, okay, let's do Raisin Cane's. Hey, you know, it's funny you say that because guess what's opening up? In a, it looks like about a year or so, on Staten Island. Five guys. No, raisin canes. Oh, nice. Uh, have you yeah, ever? Have you? Have you? Not too long ago, where I live. Have you ever tried raisin canes uh, chicken, Dane? Um, uh, a while back, because there is one in Brooklyn, but I don't quite remember if I liked it or not. But what did you think of it? I thought it was absolutely delicious. Some of the best chicken I've ever eaten. I really love it. And the, the raisin Damn. cane sauce is also great. And it's also great with my fries. You it's know, really, yeah, really I, lovely. I had it, like, back in April because uh, I was going to go see uh, Spy Family in IMAX. And, uh, yeah, like, that, that freaking sauce was good. The chicken was good. Like, damn. Yeah. It is very good chicken. You know, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of great chicken places around me. And it's kind of, oh, you know, speaking of things that I try, Jace knows what I'm about to talk about. But um, recently I tried Kong Dog for the first time. Okay. Yep. And Jace was actually on the phone with me when I did the taste test. I got a, uh, for lack of a better word, it was a legally distinct Fruity Pebbles covered corn dog. Right. And it was, it was not bad. It was not bad at all. It didn't make me want to puke my guts out. So that's always a good thing. Definitely an odd uh, flavor combination, but yeah, I well, can't imagine it being that. They've got that bad. some. They literally have a spaghetti flavored Kong dog. I think I'd like to try that actually. I like I, I like me some spaghetti. My I, spaghetti. I I am a, an Italian food connoisseur uh, sometimes. <laughs> Wait. Now, Kong, the something that I noticed. Uh huh. Now I don't know the story behind this. Maybe Jay's knows better. Than that. On the video screen of this Kong dog establishment, they played a whole shit ton of K-pop. <laughs> I believe Kong dog is a. Um, 
Korean establishment? Mm-hmm. They're, they're a Korean-based uh, company, yeah. All right, well, there you go. Korean corn dogs. Get your oh my God, flaming chassis out of the way. Stop it. Good Lord, oh my God! I get I get one chassis out of the way, and then there's another one in my way. Get out of the way! For some strange reason, Aurora I turned. Borealis. Into super, I just turned into Superintendent Chalmers. I don't know why. Aurora Borealis. So I, at this time of year, at this time of day, completely localized within your kitchen. Yes. Yes. May I see it? No. Oh. No. Wait. How many? How many Seymours are there? <laughs> See you no, well, mother, it's just the Northern episode, Lights. Well, according to that one episode, I'm actually Armin Tanzero. So. Yeah. Oh, but wait a minute. We retconned that. Yep. Yeah, immediately. Yeah. I, I like this picture. Somebody photoshopped Coach McGurk into uh, Dragon Ball Z. Not gonna lie, go on. When you told me your father went around the world collecting Dragon Balls, I automatically thought he was a heroin addict. A drug years ago, on chasing the dragon is what they call it. I say, I say, boy, you're pissing too darn loud, go on. <laughs> or stop pissing. I told you, I told you, I did. Why? For some reason, why do I? Why do I just imagine smiling fence? Look, Pip, this guy's talking about Dragon Balls and chasing the dragon. Pretty sure that means that, that means drugs. Huh? Maybe we should just leave this guy alone. No, oh, no, Charlie, we can't do that. Oh, no, Charlie. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Holy crap, what a fucking tweet. What a fucking tweet! Holy shit! What? 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 what, What's going on? This this girl tweeted out, "When I got my first gyno exam as a teenager, the gynecologist asked me what I wanted to do for a career. I said I wanted to be an artist. Then, while checking my cervix, she said I wanted to be a muppeteer. Well, anyway, that was the closest I ever got to being a muppet." Look, I can use your lips as a puppet. Look, everybody, I'm I'm Petunia the pussy. Oh my! Thoughts on thoughts on Destruction Derby '64, Dane. Um, Petunia the pussy, indeed. Oh, uh, that was that was actually a lot of fun. I was I was entertained, which is uh, uh, that that's a that's a good thing. Yeah, I was. It was. And a it lot seemed less like shitty. Mike was. Yeah, it was a lot less shitty than I was expecting it to be. I was gonna say, fucking better than Karma again. That's that's for sure. Yep. I agree. Yeah, I I expected Karma and instead this was you know, not bad. It's no cruising. It's no burnout. No, but it's not bad. Uh, uh, well, uh, Jason just gave his thoughts. I, 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 yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, it's not a typical racing game. You're actually trying to destroy things, not finish a race. Um, so that's, that's different. Uh, I, yeah, I, it's kind of fun, actually. Scores out of 10, Dane. Eight. Jason. Seven. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to give it a seven. Really good. You see, you see, we were all. You thought we were gonna just make this into a, a yeah. diarrhea car, but it's like, no, no, no. Let's give it a chance and see what happens. We, uh, we, 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 we came across a uh, uh, hidden wee, gem. Wee, 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 wee. <laughs> all right, uh, that was game one. Let's spin and see what we're playing next. We have landed on extra card. That means we have uh, three now. Spin it again. Wait, did Shane McMahon go to AEW? Not to my knowledge. Uh, he he met privately with uh, Pony Khan mm. at an airport, apparently. Pony Pony Khan. All right, now let's see if we use a diarrhea card. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Tyria card on this one. Yep. All right. So uh, goodbye, NBA Live 2000. We hardly knew ye. Get rid of that. Let's spin it again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We have landed on extra card once again. That means we have five now? No, four. But we, we just used a diarrhea card. Oh, yeah. So now we have three <laughs> again. So. Yeah. So we, we didn't. Yeah, but, but, we didn't it came to the self app. Poop, poop, vagina boob. All right. Uh, right. Let's. I'll spin this again. Poop, poop, vagina boob. It's going to make you feel good. Mike's choice. I love the shit out of this game. Oh, it's 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 a Tetris. The new. Oh, it's interesting. They went from being bulletproof software to Blue Planet software. Yeah, Bullet Planet software. Blue poop, b blue proof. <laughs> it's all blue fun. poop. <laughs> That's what happens when you eat blue too many cockies. <laughs> you get blue poop. Yeah, I know. Like if if you eat too many uh, or or drink too much uh, with the blue food coloring, you get the blue poops. Uh, okay, so let's let's dive into this talking point for a moment. So we, we are all aware of the conservative outrage of they're rocking Christianity, oh my God. Despite the fact that it was literally about the Feast of Dionysus. Yep. Correct. I mean, well, that's ridiculous. Yes. What do you expect from, uh, you know, a group of people who always has to make it about themselves? So now, apparently, the latest outrage is conservatives, quote unquote, we went to see Deadpool and Wolverine and they mocked God, so we walked out of the theater. What? I'm the Marvel Jesus. What the fuck did they expect to happen? It's a fucking Deadpool movie. Did they, were they really expecting something else? I expected something wholesome from Disney. Who knew? Oh my, oh my word. Like, no. it, it, Meanwhile, if you watch the trailer, pegging's not new to me, but it is for Disney. Oh, God. You know, it kind of reminds me of, I don't know if it was Mike Pence or Ted Cruz, who went to a <laughs> they, they, who went They're to a both known for game. pegging. <laughs> who went to a football game knowing fully well that the players were going to kneel during the anthem. And then they took a stand and they left the game out of disgust. But then it was later revealed that they were going to leave regardless because it was just, you know, a publicity stunt. I fully suspect these so-called moviegoers didn't so much go to the movie, they just, I... We left because we're taking a stand against this nonsense. This is so crass and horrible. Won't someone do these? Think of the children. What? I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know, uh, Miss Pearl Pletcher, uh, because one of my friends went to go see the movie <clears throat> and was annoyed by the fact that somebody brought, like, children under 10 to go see Deadpool and Wolverine. A rated oh R flick filled with so, blood and guts and swearing and sex jokes. So here, here comes the gimmick of this game. Oh, you've created a big block. I, yes, a big gold block, as a matter of fact. Ooh, you know, that's lovely. That would be worth... Uh... <coughs> okay, I'm going to get this Tetris with the gold block. See, I went, I went from 22 lines to 67 lines. Nice. That's well, that's, two away from nice. Anyway. Yes. Now it's nice. 
Now it's not. Well, it was nice. Yeah, for a minute. Now it's not nice. It, w it was nice. It was nice. I oh. I can't remember. I believe it was Scary Movie 2. My friends and I went to go see it on big weekend. And this gentleman comes in with three little kids. Couldn't have been older than eight or nine. And it's just like, what is this fucking guy? What, what does he think is going to happen yeah. here? Literally, the first 30 seconds of the movie are people shake your ass, watch yourself, shake your. They're they're parroting the Exorcist and the pee scene, and yeah, yeah. I have never seen a guy scoop up kids. And we're leaving faster than this this fucking guy. Some people just don't pay attention. Don't tell your mother where we were. You know, and it's it's a lot worse nowadays because like people just shove iPads in kids' hands and call it a day. Mm -hmm. How dare you say fuck and shit in an R-rated movie? What? Violence in an R-rated movie? That's outrageous. Yeah, and I mean, like they they spent no time dropping those f bombs at the beginning too. I, I guess the point that I'm trying to make is with these conservative Christians, you it's like you know what the first what happened in the first two Deadpools. What exactly were you expecting? Did you really think I this feel was like even their Christianity is performative in nature? Yeah. I I I just I really don't. I kind of wish Billy was here so we, to get his thoughts on it. I mean, I don't know what he would think, but... Because I know Wait, Mike... Somebody please think of the children! Because I know Mike is agnostic. Yeah. I am more of a humanist. And I'm not really sure. And well, Jace is the his religion is Jedi. <laughs> yep. Fair enough. I'm, that's not a joke. Yeah, no, I'm I'm very open about being a Jedi. Shit. I mean, I, I mean, I don't dislike Christianity, but I am more. Um, raised on the side of humanism. As somebody who went to a Catholic school for 13 years, yeah, I've seen the worst of it. I, I quite remember in high school overhearing a conversation between the priest and like the head of campus ministry and going like, my whole family is, is uh, you know, has has always been uh, Democrats, but I can't bring myself to vote for somebody who isn't pro-life. And I'm just like, the man started a war in Iraq for no reason. And bit my tongue because, you know, I didn't want to get friggin' suspended or some shit, you know, for lashing out. You know, I, I, I have told this story a few times before, but I remember watching a documentary called Jesus Freak. Mm. And it was about young kids, I'd say about age range, probably 8 to 12 years old, going to a religious summer camp. And I'm using air quotes. And it's literally just, it was just indoctrination central. Shit. Like... Yep, and these these kids. It was very disturbing to me watching these kids like espousing these viewpoints of oh, gay people are an abomination and this and that. And the other. It's like stop it. Like what? What are you? That, that's very stop, disturbing. Stop it. No. Get some help. What? Chicken no, man. What, what are they teaching kids in this bibble camp? 
Uh, the Bibble. It's like, uh, fucking Chick-fil-A had a... I believe they recently had a summer camp. <laughs> hey, parents! Pay us to take your kids off your hands and we'll put them to work! For nothing at all! <laughs> we'll teach them how to make crappy chicken! Yeah! Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Stupid sex flanders. Uh, yeah, and, and of course Hobby Lobby took out like a one-page friggin' uh, advertisement espousing Christian values recently in like a bunch of newspapers. I feel like they were saying like, Christianity should be the official religion of the United States. Like, no, it shouldn't. Mm, stop right there, gentlemen and ladies. Uh, m meanwhile, I think the most dangerous thing is... Uh, if you vote for me, Christians will never have to vote again. Because we're gonna. Uh, excuse me. Because we're gonna vaporize all of them. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm still, I'm waiting to see how they spin that little nugget. But it's like, hmm. won't have to vote again, huh? Mm. I, I will. Wait. I feel like the Democrats are being a little too weak sauce on Donald Trump lately because they're just talking about it as weird behavior. Oh, Donald Trump is weird. It's like, e e excuse me, what? Just weird? Really? Is that, you know, is that what we're going to use to try to, to describe be, him now? To be fair, it's apparently pissing him off substantially. I, <laughs> I will be the first to say... <laughs> I will say, the more somebody argues to say that they're not weird, the weirder it makes them sound. So I guess it's kind of working. Here's the thing that people so don't seem to know. The more defensive you get, the more people are like, oh, you're getting so defensive for her. Huh? Yeah, I'm not, just like I'm the, not, uh, uh, the J.D. Vance fucks couches thing. <laughs> You see, as we record this, ladies and gentlemen, it is all it is J July thirty first, and in the last two or so weeks, it seems like the Democratic fan base has been energized substantially. Now, I will be the first to admit, when talk of Kamala Harris possibly being the replacement. Before Joe Biden came about, it was like, oh, I don't think that's a good idea. But now it's like, oh shit, like they all the fundraising and whatnot. They, they're actually energized. And Donald Trump seems like he's actually frightened of this. Apparently yeah, he's he, they had their convention. He is their law nominee. He is locked in. Mm -hmm. What's he going to do? Drop out? He can't. Sorry. Wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. Uh, take backsies. Take backsies. Uh, uh, what, what do you mean? What do you mean? I'm, I'm the not presumptive. I'm the nominee. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Um, um. It's opposite day, opposite day. That means I'm not the nominee, so there. Yeah, J J.D. Vance, you got nominated, right? Uh, Donald, yeah. I'm too busy fucking a couch. Couch fuck. fucker 2024. I'll Good. vote for him. I <laughs> fucked way worse. <laughs> oh my god. So somebody posted this meme. So you know, you know how there's this couch as a background in some of the Homestar Runner cartoons? Uh-huh. And how at one point the couch went from being normal to having, like, a patch on it? Yes. Oh, so you know. there was a before and after picture that showed the couch before without the patch with J.D. Vance next to it. And then after, and the couch is just there with a patch on it. 
<laughs> That's wonderful, Peter. You know, you know the fact that people are now just associating GD bands with fucking couches is actually great. <laughs> it's great because it it's really getting to the point now where I really just I want JD Bass to come out and be like, I couches! I don't Hey, JD, what do you get so defensive about, buddy? I, I think that my favorite insult for him so far though has been he looks like one of those photos of a missing kid aged up to a presumptive age. <laughs> <laughs> Again, ladies and gentlemen, I have to stress, the more people get angry and defensive, the more it's like, hmm, try, people who, who, people who don't fuck couches don't get that defensive, just saying. It's true. You know, I just wish that these people would not release biographies so early on into their political careers because it's political suicide once they come out and like either one people are making up ridiculous claims that sound relatively realistic and believable like jd vance fucking couches or two you get other stories like the lady who wrote about meeting kim jong-un even though she hasn't and how she shot her dog because the dog would not obey her right right Uh oh, maybe I should have gone with the dog killer instead of the couch fucker. <laughs> so, uh, female vice presidential uh, choice might be more popular. As, for as, Joe. The as the presenter of nominee, I choose as my running mate, uh, Mary Dog Killerson. Come on up here, Mary. <laughs> Mary Dog Killerson. That's great. That's great. Right. That's what I said. I, I still can't believe that J.D. Vance's book got turned into a Netflix movie. And what book is that? I How it's I Fuck Couch Couches. Couch Astrology. How's it say? I, Same I, I said fuck, uh, Couch Fuckerology. Oh. Oh. To, to think that the only reason people know who this guy is is because of the shitty Netflix movie based off of his shitty book that he was convinced to write by a fellow venture capitalist. Well, imagine that. And and the only reason Trump knew about him was because Don Jr. was in love with the book. Uh. I, I, think, I think that Trump picked Vance just because he mistook Vance for being a slightly better looking Don Jr. Oh, Dandy, Dandy, does that mean you like me, Dandy? Uh, sure thing, I... uh, Daryl. <laughs> quite, quite frankly, I forgot you even existed at one point. <laughs> where's, where's Baron? He's the normal one. <laughs> yeah, define normal in that family. I mean, to be fair, Baron is freakishly tall and extremely athletic. He will probably go on to be the most successful Trump due to actual talent as opposed to grifting and shady shenanigans. Doesn't he, uh, I feel like he plays for the youth team of uh, the New England Revolution. I, I know that he played both soccer and basketball. My son. He was, he was a double sport Egypt athlete. Just really freaking hard to do like when you consider how intensive NCAA schedules are oh, for their athletes. that was really that was a really good fucking barely get to spend any time I in just, class I just want to point out I turned those blocks into silver and then immediately Tetris so it gave me like that was another hey. like 50 lines there's a chair great job thank you <laughs> uh, I'm actually killing it right now I'm like in the zone so uh, you you are oh. you are in the uh, the Tetris zone. Yeah. Don't yeah. Um, don't get bogged down too much in it because we're. I know. So, I know. Uh, we gotta. We'll have to stop at some point. 
before before we know it, Mike will uh, Mike will be so far into the zone he could take on Blue Scooty and uh, NES Tetris. <laughs> <laughs> Not a fucking chance. <laughs> it's hilarious to see that kid beat Logan Paul though. <laughs> it's hilarious to see any a fucking corpse could beat Logan Paul. It would be funny as fuck. Talking about he broke into the game. Oh, and and apparently he's he's being sued yet again. Who who uh, fuck face Paul? Logan Paul. Yeah. What he's being shot. sued by the Olympic Committee. Oh shit! Because Logan Paul put the Olympics logo on some prime bottles because of one of the men's basketball players uh, at the Olympics for the USA. And they're like, uh, we have nothing to do with this. Take our logo off your bottle or we're bringing you to court. But I'm the U.S. champion. Come on. What the fuck? <laughs> who, who is this Paul guy? Ron Paul? Uh, L Logan Paul, sir. Oh. He's the uh, WWE uh, U.S. champion. What's Did that? You He's the champion of the United States. I want him as my vice president. <laughs> oh, uh, also, it's coming out oh, recently. Shit, that, shit, uh, shit. Behind the scenes. Uh, oh, my fucking God. Um, Mr. Beast's latest game show that's going to be on Amazon Prime apparently had subpar working conditions and people were treated like crap. All right, I'm just going to die. Um, I, uh... Fucking completely fucked up there near the end. 293 is not bad, though. That was not bad lot. at all. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, thoughts on the new Tetris, Dane? That was a lot of fun. Um, Tetris is very hard to fuck up, really. And this did not fuck Tetris up. In fact, it was a lot of fun, especially that the new gimmick of making a gold and silver Tetris block. So that's, that was fun. Yep. Makes that, I believe, either double the lines or uh, quadruple the lines, depending on the, the type. Uh, Jason, this is demo mode, obviously. Yeah, yeah it's it's not bad. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I, will they, I will say... It made Tetris a lot more competitive once they added the uh, uh, the zone for saving a piece. Um, so I will say that uh, if you really want to prove your metal in Tetris, don't use that feature. You know, just because that's how the game was originally. Uh, but other than that, I mean, it's pretty hard to mess up Tetris. We've seen a lot of really weird Tetris adjacent games. Wordtris, Hattris, uh, Wettris. You know, <laughs> this is, and Disney, this is and good. Disney theme. Yeah. Uh, Mickey Tetris. The Disney one was good too, though. Yeah. I, uh, I did like the Disney one too, though. Tit Tetris. So. It's Tetris with tits. Uh, uh. Sextris. <laughs> Flying Buttress. Mm. <laughs> no, no, really. Sextris was a thing. It was a downloadable game back in like the Windows 95 era. The pieces were shaped like people, and you had to line them up to fuck. Okay. Uh, yeah, I this is one of my favorite uh, Tetris games ever. I played the shit out of this when I was a kid, and I had this game on the N64, uh, and I love it to death. Scores out of 10, Dane. Dang. Jason? 10. Yeah, 10. Absolutely, ten. Seems like um, all the people who were like, "All right, Mr. Beast deserves to be canceled," all these years now, finally, it's like, "Oh my God, we, we, we might actually have a legitimate reason to cancel him now." Yeah, there's there's been a lot because like one of his staffers sent uh, inappropriate messages to underage people. Uh, we, oh we, no! We have three. Do we still have three diarrhea cards? Uh, this was the first. Of the Sarge's games. Yeah. 
too. Uh, and, and let's face it, it's not going to be that good because we're not going to get Jim Cummings' voice constantly. Um... I don't know. What do you yeah, think, Jay? This game is this game is nothing without hearing Jim Cummings over and over again. If Jace will, if Jace wants to die, a real car to die. Jace. Yeah, no. Nah, this this is not a very good game. Right. Yeah, let that. Yeah, let's scatter. We're gonna diarrhea card that bastard then. I, I still remember when they added the random flesh-colored female, and it was just like that is very awkward. Why is everybody freaking like you know? A green army man, and then you get this flesh-colored bitch with green hair. What, did they think that if she was green like the rest of them, she wouldn't be as sexy? They had to make so, her a Barbie doll instead? Because of the way this wheel works, I had to leave the new Tetris on the wheel, because I have to, I'd have to go edit the wheel, and I don't want to take the time to do that. So it landed on new Tetris, so I just spun it again. Spun it again. But we land on this, and we we have two dump cards remaining now, I believe. So, ooh no, this is a good one. Is it? Um, yes. You know, I I want to see how this goes. So I, I, I Lego I, I, Racers I, is a freaking gem. Oh, okay. In that case, then yes, let us let us we, play. We will. We will. We will. We will. We will. We, 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 we. I think this is another one. Uh, this is another one that, like, I think the PlayStation version was probably better due to you know space limitations of the cartridge. But like, you get to build your own freaking vehicles and shit, and unlock parts from beating other people and beating people. Like, uh... all, all all of the like vintage Lego sets represented in here too. Like freaking the cowboys and the pirates and the Lego City and the Titty City and the City Chitty Committee and the Itty Bitty City Committee. Dun 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 dun. Why is Danger High Voltage Maker of such good games? I don't understand. Yeah, they, they were buying the uh, Harvey Birdman game. Yeah. I said good games. <laughs> that game was good. It was all right. It was Phoenix, it was, Phoenix it was Wright. It was Attorney, but... It was, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was Phoenix Wright, but with a coat of paint on it. Which is absolutely amazing, in my opinion, that they were able to do that. I don't got time to build a race, so we're just going to do this. Um, sure, yeah. circuit number one. Joan of Cart! Joan of Cart! <laughs> no. Supercharger, scooter, robo racer. Robo racer. Oh, man, this just brings back memories, like, seeing these actual, like, Lego set designs for, like, the different uh, worlds of Lego, so to speak. Or <laughs> on the high seas or on land. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> good, good talk. Good, 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 good talk. So now apparently Boogie298 tattooed the word liar on his face. Appropriate. Sure, sure he did. His fucking Keemstar... I apparently was like, oh, if you want to come back on the show, you've got to do this. If you want to come back on the show, you got to pull your penis off. Uh, I, I feel like Boogie would do that if it meant getting more name. Because he's a bastard like that. If you want to come back, back on the show, you got to commit Sudoku. Gotta get those numbers in, in, in the box. It says saltines on the box. Mmm. Haha, -ha, fucker. 
Haha, uh -huh, fucker. This is a Lego game, you can't piss. Piss. Piss shit fuck country. <clears throat> Oh, all right. You know, you're being you're being very silly. You're being very civilian. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. So what the hell did the white bricks do? They weren't showing anything. I think uh, those power up a uh, existing uh, weapon. Ah. So you grab a weapon and then you grab a white brick. I see. Well, I have a white brick. I just need a weapon. And I keep missing them. Oh, you got one now. You have, uh, you have the grappling hook. Whoops. Didn't really work the way I planned it. <coughs> fifth oh. place. Oh, fifth place. I died. For my sin. I sinned for my die. I can't believe Captain Redbeard won that race. That's very nice. You lose, but try again. Which, um, is it this Lego game or another one where when your car takes damage, it loses, like, pieces of all of it? You have to find Lego blocks. I don't remember. Um... I do think it's funny though that years later they would partner with 2K for uh, for another Lego racing game. <laughs> I have it. I just haven't played it yet. Lego 2K Drive. Oh, you got an eyeball. Now you got an oil can. Ooh. Yeah, this kind of followed the uh, the Diddy Kong Racing rules of you can tell what item you were getting ahead of time. Is it one of those things where if you hit multiple blocks of the same piece, it upgrades the weapon or item? Or... I think it did, but the white ones, like, supercharged the item. Yeah, so... Blue was uh, blue was shield. Green, I think, was boost. Red is an attack item, and then white modified it so like it went from being a cannonball to a uh, grappling hook. <laughs> and now it's magic wand. Oh, I'm Cosmo and or Wanda, or or Harry. <laughs> I'm very fond of Wanda. Oh, uh, I saw a shortcut there off to the side oh. with the uh, barrels blocking away. Now it's a whatever the fuck this now it's is. A missile? Holy shit! Yep. Triple heat seeking <laughs> missiles. And and yellow is your uh, the thing that blocks uh, your, your banana peel type weapon. Well, I guess it's got. Appeal. <laughs> anyway, you tried, Mike. You tried. I know. Magic. It's me. Oh, so it's it's a grappling hook that works on multiple people with the electricity. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, get fucked! Ouch. Everybody get fucked! Everybody get fucked tonight! Everybody, my dick. 
Everybody buy dick tonight. Could you tell me what a wang chung is? Nope. Sure couldn't. Other than that, it's a an 80s band responsible for such hits as Dance Hall Days and Let's Go. I, I will never forget uh, the the attempt at spinning off uh, that 70s show with an episode of that 80s show where all the characters were in the 80s and Fez was playing Wang Chung. And I thought they literally just, it was a whole different cast for that 80s show. They they also did a whole separate that 80s show with a different cast as well. But it started originally with them doing a single episode. What if it was them in the 80s? And Fez is like, everybody have fun tonight. Everybody have fun. A lot of people in this cast are problematic. It's very true. Especially Danny Masterson. I was gonna say he's he's the only one that I know of that's problematic. Unless there's others. Uh, there, 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 yeah. there were stories about Ashton Kutcher too. Well, Especially Ashton the whole Kutcher thing with Mila and, is. Yeah, they they were basically they had this whole big spiel of Danny Masterson didn't do anything wrong. Leave him alone. Wow. And they got fucking raped over the coals for that. Um, yep. Uh, what's his name? Valderrama. I feel like he had a lot of instances where he was dating younger women and it was kind of gross. Yeah. You know, you want to know the funny thing? A lot of people used to make fun of Topher Gracie, like, why? What is he, a fucking nerd? He stopped hanging out with his That 70s Show co stars, and it's like, he got away from them. He's the normal one. Yep. So there you go. Whip a dip a diddy, whip a dip a doo doo, whip a dip a dee dee. Years before uh, Traveler's Tales perfected the Lego formula, uh, they were more experimental with Lego games, and it was pretty interesting because, uh, you know, you you had the likes of uh, of uh, Lego Island on PC and uh, Lego Racers, of course. Uh, it seems we're kind of going back in that direction because Traveler's Tales isn't the studio behind the upcoming Lego Horizon Zero Dawn. Hmm. Interesting. Thoughts on Lego Racers, Dane? Uh, that was fun. I mean, it's I wouldn't call it like as good as Mario Kart or Diddy Kart Racing, but it was fun and it was serviceable. And that's all that matters. Jason, I think the real fun comes in like actually customizing and building your own race cars and customizing a Lego piece and all that stuff. Like it's, it's the Lego that truly adds the fun to this game because other than that, it's, it's a serviceable, basically Diddy Kong racing like game. Like, because the, it's not the same as Mario Kart with the random uh, power ups and weapons, you know, um, so you get kind of the best of one and the best of the other with the creativity of Lego sprinkled in there. Overall, it's a pretty strong game, you know, and uh, it's it's a shame that uh, we really wouldn't see. I think they made a sequel, but it didn't come out on uh, N64. It only came out on PlayStation. It wasn't as good as the first one. And then we wouldn't see another Lego racing game until uh, uh, 2K Drive, which is all right, but they crammed a live service into it too so 
yeah. It there just kind of go. goes to show you. They, they, it would have been a good game, but they ruined it. Uh, yep, it's a perfectly fine racing game. Uh, as they said, not on the level of Mario Kart or Diddy Kong Racing, but still fun. Uh, scores out of 10, Dane. Seven. Jason. Nine. I'll give it an eight. On this edition of the show, we played Destruction Derby 64, The New Tetris, and Lego Racers. Best game of the episode, Dane. Well, this is going to be tough because these are three very good games. Um, I'll say The New Tetris. Jason. I'm going with Lego Racers. I'm also going New Tetris. Uh, obvious, that was going to be obvious for me because I... I love that game. Uh, thanks for joining us for this edition of Retro Roulette. If you like what we do, please hit subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to be notified of upcoming videos. For Dane Forgione and Jason Amherst, I am Mike Riley, and I'm saying see you next time.